Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the Slingers YouTube channel. This is Slingers Home Court, where we try to give you updates on the team, insights into the players, a look behind the scenes and just about anything you can think of in the world of the Singapore Slingers. We kick off the series today with a bunch of chats with some of the key men behind the Slingers and get an update about what's been going on over the last few months as the team has had to adapt, along with the rest of the world, to the new normal. First, we'll talk to Slingers GM Michael Johnson and head coach Niu Beng Xiang to find out what's been going on with the ABL and their involvement in the Active SG Basketball Academy. And we'll also get a chance to find out what Singapore Slinger Tae Ding Lun has been up to in the new normal. All this and more on Slingers Home Court. We're really proud right now to have two men who are an absolute part of the fabric of what it is to be a Slingers. They've both been with the team since day one. Really proud to have with us right now on Slingers Home Court. It's head coach Neil Beng Xiang and GM and assistant coach Michael Johnson. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on Slingers Home Court, a brand new show on the Slingers YouTube. Obviously, the league uh, had to be suspended. Um, and different to other leagues in Singapore, I guess the ABL is, it would be tougher to start again because there are people involved from different countries and all that. But have there been any murmurings of, of what would happen for next year? Yeah, well, look, I mean, we're heavily impacted because um, we are a regional league. So it involves travel and quarantining. And there's no way we're able to uh, put on games where teams would have to come in and quarantine for 14 days and then return to their uh, home country and quarantine for 14 days. So we're, we're working, the ABL's working with the teams um, to try and look at a schedule next year that uh, is maybe not a, a home and away based uh, per se as the league's been in the past 10 years, but more some rolling tournaments in selected countries that are um, getting on top of the coronavirus. So, you know, we hope to start those tournaments in say March and they'll roll in every two months and they'll culminate at the end for a, like a tournament of champions. So the, the winners of the tournaments and the teams with the most points uh, will, will go on and play in the final championships. With the hope of obviously um, December the 2021 uh, that we're on top of the virus and travel and quarantines are back to normal and we can start up the, the, the league in a home and away basis as per the last 12, uh, 10 years. And Coach, how tough has it been? for you to, to, to have to be away from the team for so long, having been with the Slingers since day one, and how tough has it been on the boys as well to, to not be able to train oh, until recently? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, because of this COVID, they gave back uh, March, so basically everything has to stop. So we are not allowed to train uh, at OCBC and we have to stay home. So we did actually, like, couple of coaches and players we did a sort of e-learning base so at least they got something doing back at home and uh, something to work it out and uh, pretty happy that it opened up in September and we got a chance to come back and train individual although fine in, in the half court but I think that's better than nothing but uh, at least three times a week and we are working I mean once a day once a week for which session before everything is, is uh, settled down so I think I'm happy with this at the moment. And they came at a time as well, I guess, when the team's been doing really well. Three finals in four years. Um, is that now a minimum expectation? Like, would that be, is that too, too much to say that, that that is what we expect when we go into the season now? Oh, look, I mean, uh, the fans would like you to win it every year. And, and obviously, we're in it to win it, um, like everyone else. But we also have another mandate for us is is to give opportunities to our local players and, and continue to improve that and you know I think what we've as it's disappointing that we haven't been able to win a championship yet but having achieved three making three finals in four years when we are consistently playing with less foreign born players than everyone else um, you know our league has, has, has had some liberal rules when it comes to local uh, eligibility and, and none of them are, none of them have sort of suited us uh, that we can take advantage of it but having said that um, even when we could uh, we would always have one less uh, import minimum um, to others so you know the ability to get to the three finals in four years uh, where we have three maximum of three imports uh, where other teams can have you know four or five six foreign born players I think it's a testament to the system and the, and the program and the culture 
and and I think it's really borne out in in the local players improving yearly uh, on a yearly basis. Yeah, I think it's shown as well. I think there are, there have been times throughout the last few seasons where it is an all local five on court and and people love it. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you, you just tell us how that that ethos and was shaped. That like this is a huge part of the Slingers DNA to give local guys a chance. Like how that was shaped and and why we we've gone about doing things this way. Well, obviously we started when we came to Singapore 14 years ago, in 2006, we started, there was no really regional leagues for us to play in, so we played in the Australian NBL. And, you know, you get criticism, you know, because the, the rules of the NBL, we had to have X amount of Australian players and so forth. But in reality, our kids weren't up to that, our local kids weren't up to that level anyway. But the opportunity for those two years to train on a day-to-day -day basis with those guys and learn from them was invaluable. And then we, we looked at it and we said, look, it didn't really suit us and the cost was, you know, ridiculous and, and we couldn't get any more local players in with that system. So we decided to, to look for and start up our own league and with, with Tony Fernandez, who was then our chairman, um, he, he went out and sought teams and, and we started the ABL and it kicked off in 2010. Now, well, that's a different story. That's always been set up to, uh, to promote uh, local players and improvement of local players. So from that that day onward, the majority of our team became local overnight, and which is great. And we we've continued that idea that it, it was built. This league was built as a uh, a training platform for local talent. So we've always gone with less. Um, and you know we we've, we've had success. Um, so we we didn't see any real reason to change it. And. We've had some of our players that have fallen in and fallen out of the team for various reasons, uh, some personal reasons, some uh, business reasons, some national service uh, commitments. Um, and we haven't really missed a beat. You know, it's given opportunities to other local players. Uh, we haven't brought in imports to replace them. And, um, and we've gone from strength to strength um, with our depth and our, our local players. So we we're really, really proud of that. And then we've been able to join with the Activist G Basketball Academy over the last three to four years. And part of the reason that being is uh, potential of jobs in the future for our players when they retire. And right now we have two or three of our former players that, that are working as head coaches or coaches at the Activist G Basketball Academy, which is fantastic. And um, I, I want to get to the Activist G Basketball Academy, but before that, um, having this, this, this DNA in promoting the local players, I think opportunities given to them, not just on court, but what are some of the opportunities maybe off court that these guys have had because of the Slingers? Yeah, I think, um, and Nia can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when, when we got here, uh, the national team players, for example, they, they would play in the Siaba tournament and they play three games a year overseas uh, against ASEAN countries. But what we've been able to do uh, with since we've been here and the opportunities we've been able to unveil for players and, and coaches alike over the years has been fantastic. I mean, we've done everything from go to Broome, Western Australia and play in open air tournaments there against Australian and, and Chinese CBA professional teams. Um, we've been able to send two players and, and coach Neo to Adelaide uh, the last two years to train with the Adelaide 36ers. And, and learn from them. Uh, Neo was also able two years ago to go to the NBA Summer Pro League and we were able to go to some coaching clinics there um, to learn from those. Uh, they've met through the Active SG Academy and the Junior NBA. We've been able to meet many, many NBA players, including the, the late, great Kobe Bryant. They've been able to mingle with Yao Ming in Broome when he was there with the Shanghai Sharks. So opportunities that these guys would never, I think, had um, they've been able to get through this program and, and, um, and from that uh, some of these guys have gotten some good personal uh, endorsements and, and different product endorsements uh, which is fantastic um, and I think that's one of the, again the proud things for this club is to, to offer the local players these type of opportunities um, over these many years. And that now obviously has has gone a step further with the Active SG Basketball Academy where it's not just at a professional level but you're doing things with kids at a grassroots level. Coach, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the Active SG Basketball Academy does and what how the Slingers are involved. Okay, so basically this uh, ABA is uh, there's a couple of category. So from age 5 to 7 and 8 to 10 and 11 to 14. So we start out with those uh, especially 5 to 7, learn to play, 
uh, even the 8 to 10 and 11 to 14 then we will basically pick the better one like we call it development center okay to put them uh, uh, into the development center and basically they'll the head coaches will take over and help out and to do more details and basically work on all the fundamental in future they can they might be one of the national or even slingers player and uh, all the players like okay we just send them to different centers and uh, help out to coach the kids as well at the moment we've got seven center so this is the opportunity for our boys to really step in and help ABA and especially based on their sort of skills and uh, experiences I think they can do a good job on that and uh, we also got ex slingers players helping out with the, the academy right we can mm. tell us which players and what they're doing in fact actually uh, we got a lot of slingers and ex slingers players are on board uh, with the ABA so like uh, even you know uh, Russell Lowe now he's with uh, he, I mean because of his uh, work commitment you know he's sort of a, um, not playing as a pro with slingers and uh, but he's helping out as an assistant coach in the ABA and Ching Te is uh, he sort of retired because of his injury and his full time head coach uh, in ABA as well and a lot of uh, players like okay, uh, even Ding, Dell, Lavin, you know, Kelvin, Desmond, Humping is all on board and basically I think that is the pathway for them to really in, in future to, to take over you know, or help out the ABA. And do you think it's important to have these players involved and keep that, that Slingers DNA like going through every sort of part of basketball? Yeah, well the big part of our program is community um, and before the virus hit um, we were doing 60 to 80 school clinics a year, free school clinics and, and just getting the brand and getting basketball interested and out there and I think it's important for us to be involved in the Act of SG Basketball Academy and we're working down the lines later of, of even possibly having a junior slingers and um, more of an elite sort of side of it to the academy. But I also think it's important that the Active SG Basketball Academy is, is community based as well. So it's for all levels of kids that, that want to play the game and it's spread across everyone. And I think that's where our guys do a great job. Uh, they've done many of our school clinics, so they're used to running uh, clinics um, and they do a fine job. And it's important for them to be you know, seen in the community, helping, giving back to, to the grassroots. And what about with the fans? I know you said the uh, season ticket sales are at their highest, I think. Before. Yeah, they were. I mean, they they went from uh, just over 200 uh, two seasons ago to over 400 for the last season. And, and Slingers fans are great. Like, honestly, they are they're great. some of the funniest fans out Yeah, no, they, are. <laughs> oh, they, they get into it. Um, and they've evolved over the years. They're a little bit quiet initially, uh, but now they're fantastic. And, and we had two huge games, uh, the Filipino game and the Fubon games, which were outstanding games. Um, um, and our crowd really loved it and, and got into it. And we had some big games coming up. And so that was disappointing for them. And, and they were fantastic. In, in we, we, we've um, corresponded with them. We actually ordered in uh, masks, uh, with Slingers branded masks, and, and sent them out to all of our season ticket holders, got, got complimentary mask, just to say, hey, we're thinking of you. Uh, sorry that we can't play at the moment, but uh, keep us in your thoughts and stay healthy and well. And, Hope they'll, they'll all be back for when we resume next season. Well, Jens, thank you so much for joining us here on Slingers Home Court. It has genuinely been an honour to be able to watch both of you on court uh, all these years. And uh, I hope to see you all back on court sooner rather than later. Thanks. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you so much. He's been with the team since 2016, but as with everyone else who's had a year like no other, he once described playing for the Slingers as a dream come true. We've got with us Slingers guard and forward Tae Ding Lun Ding. Thank you so much for joining us here on Slingers Home Court. First, let's start with what you've been up to this year. Obviously, it's like a year like no other for everyone. Um, maybe you can take us through when you all found out that the season would be suspended. Uh, we found out in May around that time uh, so it's been tough for all of us uh, so basically like during the COVID period when it's uh, you know we have to stay home every day most of us can't really go back to the court I think it's been part of our daily life I think that's the toughest part for us you know we've been training we always uh, train on the court you know the fitness it's very different when you train on the court and off the court you know the fitness level is always uh, court fitness that's what we call it and definitely when you stop playing 
I think that's the toughest part for us. So most of us just try to stay home. We keep fit. You know, for me, I've been trying to stretch, uh, home workouts, occasionally go for a run, and you know, bring the basketball down with me sometimes just to you know bounce it and try not to forget the feeling of you know bouncing the ball. And so basically, that's what I have been doing during the circuit breaker. Right now, uh, we are back back to training with the slingers in the morning individually. And I mean, it feels good to be on the court and you know bouncing the ball, shooting. I think the the best part is to shoot the ball to the in the hoop and not just bouncing around aimlessly. I think so. Right now we are just back and we are been we've been in the gym in the SSI back to SSI as well. So we are now trying to get back in shape. And it's five on on court at one time. Yeah, it's five on each side. So I think it's still not like. Five on five, you know, that's the part that I miss the most about the game, because like you miss your teammate, you miss uh, you miss coaching, and you miss the coaches, uh, because you know, sometimes you know it feels weird when you're training one on one, but when five on five, you know, I think it gets the intensity up high. You know, you both of the team wants to win, whether you're red or you're white, it doesn't matter. You know, when you're on that team, you know, everyone's like, hey yo, let's you know, win this game, even though it's just to seven, but. I think most of us really, for me personally, that's what I miss the most for uh, about being on the court. And how was it in terms of keeping in touch with your teammates uh, during like this entire period? It must be so hard. Like you guys are so close. You all travel together, and then now suddenly you can't see each other. Yeah, traveling. You know, traveling is the the part where you bond with your teammates because like you know, ten of us, twelve of us, or fifteen of us just travel together. You see them. The moment you wake up, you see your teammate beside you. I mean. <laughs> It's it's weird, but I mean it's fun. It's it's really fun because you travel with your teammate, you travel with the coaches. You know, the moment you wake up, you go for breakfast, you see everyone. So I think uh, when you're in a circuit breaker, it's tough. But most of us do like video call. So like I I've been uh, video uh, me and Leon, we've been video call. Sometimes we work out together, and you know we just keep in touch. We text, you know, uh, stuff like that. And we try right now when it's open, you know, uh, we meet up for lunch, meet up for. Dinner, breakfast, or we just go out and ball together. But of course, you know we ball like five person each court. But we don't uh, ball as in five on five. We just you know do some shooting together, do some drills. You know we work out together, gym together. We find ways to keep in touch. And but it's not so bad right now because we can. I I see Lavin, Delvin, uh, Jackson, and Des occasionally. And I've been with the active SG, so. I see Hampin in Sengkang. I see Qingde in Aukang. So it's been fun. I mean, it's a new thing for me to coach young kids, but I kind of enjoy it because you know sometimes they are cute, even though sometimes they are a bit naughty. But you just try to you know play with them and teach them new things, and you see them improving, uh, learning new things like jump shot, even though it's so simple. But when they learn something like that, it is it's very nice to see them. Uh, learning new things every day for their body and keeping fit. That's great. Yeah, it's great to hear that you guys are involved as well at yeah. the grassroots level. What about playing at like OCBC Arena with those fans? You know, dude, OCBC OCBC Arena can really rock on yeah. some days. Like, well, yeah. that must be amazing to play. Yeah, it, it's, it is. Uh, especially when we win by twenty, you know, everything goes well. You know, like, uh, you know, everyone making their shot. You know, it's it's like, I probably say it's the best arena for me. To play, I mean, playing at home is definitely the best, you know, because you come, you know, your family come to support you, your friends, you know, whoever, you know, all everybody you will see on the court, you you will find all the familiar faces, so you will know all of them. Most of the fans are always like, you know, the people that watch have been with us since day one, right? Are the people that you will remember, so it's definitely fun, and especially when you are winning by twenty, everyone gets to play, everyone score a basket. I think that is the best part about playing the OCBC and playing for the Slingers because like. You know the team all comes together, and the crowd comes together. I think that's the for me that's the best feeling ever for being a singer. Let's talk also about what you've been up to off the court. I know that you've you've diversified. You've got a new startup. Uh, can you tell us more about that and and what exactly you've been doing with it? Uh, so I basically started Moonwalk Co. It's a backpack company which I'm doing online e-commerce. Uh, we have some examples here. Yeah. Uh, very nice bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Basically, this is the bag that I started up with. Uh, this three, there's three versions. Uh, the black one is it comes with a lock, and it's a bit slightly bigger than this these two other versions. But 
The reason why I started this backpack was I wanted something that is waterproof, uh, reliable, and you know could put my training gears and everything. Like the the reason why this has a lock is because we travel a lot, and sometimes we just you know I think being Singaporean like we feel that Singapore is safe, so sometimes we just leave our bag there. So when you travel overseas, sometimes you might leave your bag at a airport or something. But having a lock, you know. People might think twice before trying to do something, and uh, bring waterproof. It's definitely gonna help a lot because sometimes you know it rains, rains all the time here. Rains all the time here, so yeah. And no, and one more thing is when we train after practice, right? We are pretty sweaty, so I wanted something that you know you can wash it outside, then it doesn't stink. Cause sometimes when you know when you buy all those backpacks, and then sometimes after a while it stinks, right? So I was trying to get something that. That wouldn't have that problem. So and then this came and I, I looked and I researched and I found this. So I think the cool part is like we could carry as a backpack, a duffel bag, and you know a walking bag. I don't know how how did people get these bags and where do where can they buy them from? Uh, they can go to our Instagram Moonwalk Co. Or they can check out uh, the uh, my Instagram has my website inside. So they can just click on our website or they can just uh, straight away click on the uh, Instagram and buy it from there. It's an Instagram shop, so people can just take a look, and if they want it, they can just click on the on the what do you call it, the shop, and they will bring it to the page. Okay, so they go to is it at Moonwalk? At I think Moonwalk we, we you can see where you can go and get these bags, and we've also got a couple of these bags. These are Slingers exclusive bags yeah. by Tae Ding Lun that we are giving away on Home Call. All you have to do is log on to the Slingers Facebook page. There'll be a couple of questions there that you need to answer, and you could be walking away with these great Moonwalk exclusive Slingers bag. Ding Lun, it's been great catching up with you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us here on Slingers Home Call. That's all for episode one of Slinger's Home Court, and we'd like to leave you with a little something from the team. It's been an extraordinary year with unprecedented circumstances. We hope everyone's been doing okay. And we'd also like to say a big thank you to all Singaporeans for being able to rise to the challenge that has been the pandemic. A big salute to our healthcare workers, frontliners, teachers, migrant communities, and all Singaporeans. You've given us all hope and a reminder of how wonderful this country can be. So from the Singapore Slingers, thank you, Singapore.